Good morning, all. As we continue our walk through the source and summit of all Christian life, also known as the Mass, originally known as the breaking of the bread in the Acts of the Apostles, also called the liturgy, called the sacrifice, called the liturgy of the Eucharist, many things we Catholics call one thing, many things a lot of the times. So Mass was the way this was called centuries, centuries later. But anyway, so we talked about four parts of the Mass, the introductory rites, the liturgy of the Word, the liturgy of the Eucharist, and the concluding rite. Today we're going to focus a little bit on the liturgy of the Eucharist, um, but we're also going to have to talk about another topic, I think. So the liturgy of the Eucharist, you could look at as two main pillars, the Eucharistic prayer being the heart of the liturgy of the Eucharist, and it can be broken down into several parts as well. So um, when we look at the liturgy of the Eucharist, we can break it down further into, let's see, the preparation of the gifts, the prayer over the offerings, the Eucharistic prayer, which the Eucharistic prayer can be broken down. We'll break down that just a little bit. The communion rite, the Lord's prayer, the Our Father, the rite of peace, the fraction of the bread. When the priest breaks the bread, that's actually what the Mass was called at the Exodus of the Apostles, the breaking of the bread. The fraction rite, communion, and then we get to the concluding rites. All right, those are parts of the liturgy of the Eucharist. Now I'm going to look a little, just briefly at a couple parts of the Eucharistic prayer because they're very, very important to this concept that we have to talk about. So, in the beginning of the liturgy of the Eucharist, all right, preparation of the gifts and the prayer over the gifts, we say these words. The priest says, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The people respond, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. For our good and the good of all his holy church. What sacrifice are we talking about? Who are we talking about? All right. So we have in the Eucharistic prayer itself what we call the words of consecration. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Okay. Before we do what we call the words of consecration, the priest puts his hands over the bread and wine and calls on the Holy Spirit to transform them. All right? After we do the epiclesis, calling down the Holy Spirit to transform the bread and the wine into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, we say these institution, we say what's called the institution narrative, and then the words of consecration, which I just read. Take this, all of you. This is my body. Take this, all of you. Drink from it. Okay. Then after that, we say this. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Here's the concept we got to talk about. Sacrifice. Sometimes the Mass is called the Holy Sacrifice. Why? What are we offering? What is the sacrifice? Also, covenant. Jesus uses that one time in the New Testament when he celebrates the, the Last Supper, which is the Mass. And he uses that phrase, really, the New Covenant. It's translated to the New Covenant one time. So sacrifice and covenant go together like peanut butter and jelly. Now, I'm not going to be able to talk about covenant today, but I'm talking about sacrifice. So Again, they go together like peanut butter and jelly, sacrifice and covenant. We have to go back. 2,000 years ago was in a very sacrificial way of worship, sacrificial way of life. There were five main types of sacrifice, biblical sacrifice. They used animals. They also used bread. They also used wine. They also used barley. Some of the sacrifices, they burned the whole thing. Sometimes they took part of it, and they consumed it, and they ate it. They used various animals. So there were bloody sacrifice and unbloody sacrifice. Why? Why were they sacrificing? The meaning of sacrifice was this in the biblical world. Ritualized self-offering. I'm giving myself to God. It's also prefiguring what we do here. It represented the offer. So when I sacrifice to God, it's representing me. And I'm entering into communion with the divine. This is what sacrifice meant to them. And if we recall, we were created to share in God's divinity. That's why we exist. So the sacrificial system 
was about expressing communion with God and restoring communion with God. And they had three main sacrifices to express communion with God. They had two main sacrifices to restore communion with God. And by the way, if we can almost do some comparison to sacraments, we have baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. We call those the three sacraments of initiation. And then we have sacraments, two sacraments of healing, reconciliation and anointing of the sick, right? Passover was a sacrifice. The Todah, which meant Thanksgiving, was a sacrifice. The Tamid. The Tamid, when Jesus got crucified, what they were doing was the two sacrifices every day. Nine o'clock, probably. Three p.m. in the morning, they sacrificed the lamb. They burnt the whole thing. That was called the Tamid sacrifice. So different kinds of sacrifices, bloody, unbloody, expressing the offer and entering in communion with God. Okay. So what do we do at the Mass? What did Jesus do? So at the sanctuary, we see the crucifix, right? That's a reminder of the sacrifice. And the mass is a participation in, a representing of that sacrifice. It is not a new sacrifice. We participate sacramentally in that sacrifice at every mass. Christ is offering, Jesus is offering himself to the Father, a victim of love, to the Father. That's what we do at every Mass. So at every Mass, we're at Calvary. Every Mass, we participate in that sacrifice. The bread and the wine become the body, blood, soul, and divinity. And the priest offers that sacrifice up to the Father. But we offer ourselves with that. So in other words, I'm offering my life, my cares, my sorrows, my joys, my problems with that sacrifice made present here in what was bread and wine that is now Jesus Christ to the Father. This is sacramental. This is mystical. This is divine. This is mysterious. But at every Mass is why sometimes we should remember, well, we should always remember, it is a sacrifice. It's covenant. It's communion. It's all those things. But we're, right now we're focused on sacrifice. So that sacrifice that happened 2,000 years ago made present at every Mass, we participate in that. And we participate in the liturgy of Jesus Christ. We participate in the liturgy of Jesus Christ. That's how incredible the Mass is. All right. Close out with some whys. Why go to Mass? We enter into the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's why. We're at Calvary. There's nowhere else where we enter into that sacrifice that we do in this incredible way at the Mass. We do it at the Mass. Also, I was thinking as I was talking about the, uh, recently the first commandment. First commandment, you shall have no other strange gods before you. I'm the Lord your God. When we come to worship that Jesus gave us, we come to the holy sacrifice of the mass, and sometimes we want to focus on, uh, you know, I didn't like the music, I didn't like the homily, I'm not being fed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, that's a sense of idolatry because you're making your experience more important than the worship given to God, more important than entering into that sacrifice at every Mass. Obviously, there are more reasons to explain that, but that's just one as we continue the walk through the source and summit of all Christian life.